Is your experience of spirituality connected to your personality? Does your personality determine what kind of spiritual practices are right for you? Is there any relationship between spirituality and personality? Those are questions I want to explore today. And as I do, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel and click the bell so you're notified of future videos. In the field of psychology, there are tests, well, really inventories, that are referred to as personality type inventories. And these inventories assess or give some indication about possible personality traits that an individual may have. These things are commonly used, but generally not by psychologists. Very few psychologists actually use these. And there are two reasons for that. The first is that these inventories claim to measure personality, but they don't do it in a reliable way. They, they, we don't know for sure that they're measuring what they claim to measure, and they don't do it time and time again, so that the validity and the reliability just isn't there with these inventories. The other thing is that the inventories were generally developed 50 years or more ago, and at that time, the understanding of personality within psychology was different from, it is, from how it is today. Previously, in psychology, personality was understood to emerge out of childhood temperament, and that as an individual grew into adulthood, personality was set, and it continued throughout the lifespan. We don't view it that way any longer. Instead, in psychology, we understand that personality can change throughout the lifespan, and there are many reasons that it can change. Part of it may be developmental, Part of it could be because of illness or certain medications. Part of it could be life stress or, or tra trauma that happens in life. So many factors play into our personality. And we also know that things called personality disorders can be treated. So that leads to a change in personality. So personality is not st static, it's malleable. And that means these inventories, even if they were measuring what they were claimed to measure, what does that mean other than providing a snapshot in the moment? The people who use these inventories may be some other mental health professionals, but they're often used in business. And many people that work in the field of spirituality, uh, seminar leaders, spiritual teachers, other folks will use these inventories. The two most common are the Myers-Briggs type inventory and the Enneagram. But there are others. There are those that will tell you what color your personality is or what animal you are or all kinds of different things. Uh, and they're all equally in the same sort of group here. What research from psychology tells us about these inventories is that, well, not only aren't they necessarily really reliable, but that there is no real connection between spirituality and personality. Instead, for 60% of the people who take these, there seems to be no correlation between spirituality and spiritual practice. 60% is a lot, but that still leaves us 40%. So who's in that other 40%? Well, to understand that, it's going to be important to understand how psychologists today look at personality. The model that's most commonly used is known as the big five personality traits. Those personality traits include extroversion, agreeableness, openness, conscientiousness, and neuroticism. People who are high scoring in assessments for neuroticism have a great deal of difficulty with spirituality and spiritual practice. So there's a negative correlation there. The people who score high in neuroticism are, you know, demonstrate frequent mood swings, irritability, moodiness, there is some emotional instability there. These are people who have difficulty being focused and being calm. And so spirituality, spiritual practice is just difficult for them, just as many things in life are difficult for them. 
And then of course, in that other 40%, so these people are in the 40%, the other people who are in the 40% are those who serendipitously line up that their personality traits lead to their spiritual practices. So that does happen, but it seems to happen by chance, not by design. What about me? I've taken many of these things over the years. And the one I've taken most frequently is the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, because that's been used in lots of groups and organizations I've been part of. It's often used for team building. And what I find with the Myers-Briggs is that if, for instance, I take it alone, whether it's you know pen and paper or sitting at a computer doing it online, is that I, when I'm alone, I will score high on introversion. But if I take it in a group setting, I'll score high on extroversion. So what do those results mean? Do I change that quickly? Well, that would be a little crazy. Instead, that has to do a lot with the context, and that's true for many people. But I know myself well enough to know that my natural tendency is to be more on the introverted side. I think things through before I speak. You know, I'm more analytical. I, I prefer the quiet to noise. And I'm happier with just a few people around than in a big crowd. So all those things are about introversion. And there's literature that would say people who are more introverted tend to contemplative practices, contemplative spiritual practices. Well, that's true for me, except when it's not because I've also participated in Native American drumming, African drumming, in Native American dancing at ceremonies and other things that are extroverted and kinesthetic. And I found them deep and rich, spiritually fulfilling and mystical. So I don't know what that means in terms of my personality traits and spiritual practice. Uh, I think that people are, tend to be much broader than their personality traits. If you're interested in personality traits, sure, go online, look up these inventories, and you can take them for free online. They're available to you. But I think that the most important thing for understanding what spiritual practices and how spirituality works in our life is to look back on our life history, to look at those moments in life that we ourselves would define as spiritual. Not what somebody else tells us is spiritual, but what we would feel as spiritual. As we get a sense of those things in the past, then we develop a better sense of how we can move in, into the future in a way that's healthy and balanced for us. And yes, indeed, a good spiritual director can help with that. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, like the video, share it with others, leave me some comments, and know that I appreciate the time you spend with spirituality beyond borders. Have a really great day.